Thank you for everybody coming. Uh, it's been a long day for me, but this is what I enjoy doing it. Uh, health, health promotion and health improvement of population. Uh, the 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 issue with the world, developing world or developed world is we um, have been, um, you know, our, our lifespans of getting longer and longer. And uh, the reason for that is we used to die from um, communicable diseases like uh, cholera, typhoid, malaria, all kinds of uh, smallpox, uh, kinds of diseases. And, uh, and we also died of lack of nutrition, a lot of famine, and people died. Millions of people died of lack of nutrition. And we have conquered those pretty much in majority of the world, especially in developed worlds. Uh, uh, and and our our health um, uh, currently uh, is 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 a is a huge health problems are due to overnutrition and a wrong nutrition. And we as physicians, um, so so we are we are living longer and longer. And um, and as you live longer, you get longer diseases. But our our primary goal of getting healthy uh, and live longer is by morbid nutrition, uh, because we have a lot of diseases of nutrition or overnutrition and wrong nutrition. Uh, that has been the biggest issue, and 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 we have we have also improved medical treatments to keep people live longer, uh, especially the heart disease uh, and, uh, and cancers are going to be better. But if we could prevent the disease, there would be better actually long term for the for the population health as well as the cost of managing uh, you know of, of health. So saying that, but first I want to you know present uh, what's going on in this country and, and around the world. So here are the conditions um, that we suffer from: cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, obesity. All these are nutrition related diseases. These are not communicable diseases, some infection diseases, but mostly uh, these are these are the conditions that, uh, that are affecting us. So here is the uh, world where obesity. Um, the United States is number one. Uh, we have the highest obesity rates. India has the lowest obesity rates. But uh, when Indians migrate to the United States, they turned out to be having the highest heart disease in the entire world. As a subpopulation of people like me who came to this country, has the highest incidence of heart disease because our nutrition suddenly changed from totally different. And, and then that's how, that's how we have such a high disease. So, so this is a big issue. Um, childhood obesity. Again, how do we get rid of this corner? You know, the... Oh, that's a record. Okay. Again, you can see the United States childhood obesity is, is very high uh, compared to other countries. Look at the other end, uh, but that's changing fast. And uh, here is the population of the world. Actually, two thirds of the population is overweight, uh, especially in the developed countries. I'm not saying obesity, but so we have, um, you know, humans have been on this planet for about a million years, and we evolved. As we evolved, uh, our body had to adapt to the nutrition that was available and how it came in. And that has changed over the last 10,000 years. Uh, the the, the, um, you know, the uh, agricultural revolution came about 10,000 years ago, and then currently the industrial revolution uh, of mass producing food it's come within the last 100 years, and, and there's a huge change in how we consume food and how we process food has changed dramatically, which is the biggest problem at this point. And here's the evolution of, uh, oops, I did something. Okay. Um, so as we, as humans, humans are just another animal on this planet. We are called mammals. Mammals produce milk. It's as simple as the definition gets. So humans are mammals and we're part of the animal kingdom, but we have evolved as our brain gotten bigger and bigger. Um, we have gotten smarter and smarter. In humans, per body size, that's the largest brain of any animal. 
And that's how that's why we have we're different, but we're still our bodies didn't change how we process food and how we you know how our health um, is with the food coming in. So this is our evolution. It's uh, it's sad to see this, but uh, this is how we are born. So there are a lot of preventable causes of death. Um, the smoking is always going to be number one because it causes a lot of cancer and other diseases. But right next to it is is overweight and obesity. Um, really, the uh, the drug abuse and firearms, and we spend so much time debating about these things are very little compared to the first three. Look at the alcohol, obesity, and 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 tobacco abuse. Uh, of course, infectious disease this year has become number one, but <laughs> hopefully that will change. Um, so, so the nutrition came to our body in three forms, right? We, we eat fats, we eat proteins, and we eat carbs. Um, so when we eat fat, what happens is the fat gets absorbed and it directly is utilized or stored without need for insulin. But I want you to remember this. Insulin is the biggest issue of our diet. So when you eat a fatty meal, it does not produce insulin. The proteins, same way, proteins need very little insulin. It is broken down into amino acids and it's used as a building blocks for the body. So, and, and, and those two um, substances do not require insulin uh, to process our food. When you eat carbs, Carbs come in different forms, but when you eat carbs, our body figured out um, majority of their nutrition comes from the carbs. So it has to figure out how to store it and how to utilize it at a later time. So, so over the period of time, we we uh, we generated insulin for that process. What insulin does is when you eat a meal with the carbs, the blood sugar rises. And then you release insulin because you don't need all that energy at that moment. So you have to store it. So the, our storage, our refrigerator in our body is our liver. So when you eat a big meal with the carbs and it, the insulin gets released and it converts into glycogen and that goes into the liver. And that's how we store it. And for when you're not eating it at the later part of the day or a day or two, then it brings back all that stored energy so that you could sustain your blood sugars. So that's how uh, the, the, the carbs, carbohydrates are utilized. There are a lot of sugars, a lot of carbs, a lot of different carbs. It's very important to know there's, there, are things, there are things called monosaccharides. I mean, there's one molecule of sugar. That's what we eat in regular sugar, or, uh, and the fruit has a fructose, and then Milk has a galactose. These are all monosaccharides. And there's disaccharides, like malt liquor has maltose, and that's, a, you know, and the, and the milk has lactose. And, and these are the things. Uh, so there are two single molecule and two molecule called monosaccharides and disaccharides. And then there are polysaccharides. Uh, these are long chain uh, parts, carbohydrates with the multiple uh, molecules in them. They don't get absorbed that easy. Some of them, like a fiber, um, you absorb it. Some of them, soluble fibers, there's a lot of insoluble fibers. It, it, it uh, kind of stabilizes our uh, absorption rate of the simple carbs. So it's very important to have this kind of a long chain polysaccharides in our diet. And we are lacking that in our prepared or processed foods. And it's a big problem. So just the you know what we have glucose and fructose and different, uh, uh, but they're all monosaccharides. Look at all the foods that we consume: brown sugar, maple syrup, corn syrup, all these things. High fructose corn syrup, juices, apple juice concentrate. Everything is nothing but glucose and fructose. There's no fiber. There's no polysaccharide. So it's it gets absorbed very quickly and raises the sugar very quickly. So. And and there are a lot of food food groups have a lot of fiber. Meat has no fiber. Fatty products, either dairy fat or animal fat, has zero fiber. Fiber is very important for our health. 
And here are the you know foods that have a lot of fiber. Um, if you look at them, beans or beans have the highest amount of fiber uh, and and a lot of protein with no fat, and and it has a lot of antioxidants. So like green bean, but like like garbanzo bean, uh, black bean, red bean. There's so many kinds of food. Food beans out there. They're they're very nutritious and a lot of fiber in them. And and in fact. The beans have more calcium than milk. People don't know that. People say, oh, you have to drink milk to get the calcium. And my question to people is, you think a horse is drinking milk to keep the brain strong? <laughs> and, 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 and then the other question I get is, oh, we have to eat, uh, where do we get protein if I don't eat meat? You know what is the strongest animal on the planet? We say all the time, strong as an Ox, right? You think ox is eating meat to build the muscle? <laughs> so we don't need to eat all this. I think this is all, all these ideas are promoted by our food industry. Uh, really, I mean, if you really think about it, uh, that's how it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, we don't need to eat meat to build the muscle and all this meat, uh, all the protein supplements and all this stuff. We have plenty of foods that we could actually consume and be very healthy. So here is the, the grain. We eat grains. We have been eating grains because we're growing grains. And grain has three parts to it. One is called the, the bran. Bran is full of fiber. Full of fiber. It doesn't get absorbed. And then you have an endosperm, which is the which is flour. Whatever the grain flour is. And then you have a germ which has a multiple nutritious uh, vitamins and all kinds of stuff. So we take out, we polish off the bread and we take out the germ and we make the flour. And that's what the processing is. To process food too much anymore. That's, that's a big issue. Now you took this white flour, which is basically a monosaccharide type of food and then gets absorbed very fast. And there is no, there is no nutritional value to the food when you process the food. Just like an orange versus orange juice, you lose nutritional value, and actually it's detrimental. Uh, drinking juices and stuff like that, and our sodas. You know. So, so we we you know we have a cycle of um, uh, hunger, and and when you eat a meal, you get satisfaction and satiety. So you eat so much food and you stop it. And hunger is a trained phenomenon. What I mean by that is, if you eat five meals a day, the hunger comes in those hours every day. But if you don't eat, say, breakfast for five days, you will lose that. Those, those five, six, seven days is an important thing. The timely factor of how our brain is trained is very important um, to, to do the, what we call intermittent fasting. So, so this, is a, this is a phenomenon that you have to train your body over a very short period of time. It could be two weeks for some people, it could be a month, but no more than that. It's a very short period. Hunger comes in waves as you train your brain, not because, you know, because the time, okay, it's seven o'clock, I have to eat, um, because you have eaten that way for a long time. So we'll talk about that, how to change it. I think it's a very important thing to change our hunger pattern. Um, and and uh, here is our food. Um, we The problem of food is there are three things that are uh, psychedelic agents um, that are their most powerful addicting agents. There are three of them. One is sugar. Number two is caffeine. Number three is mescaline. Most people don't know what mescaline is. Mescaline is a is a psychedelic drug used by American Indians. That's why they, they take the drug and they can jump up and down and see <laughs> these things. And, uh, and, 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 and we never give the kid, our children, okay, drink coffee right in the morning, but they'll drink soda, which has two things, the sugar and caffeine. No problem, we give them, we give them a super size Bottles. So it's a huge issue. And we are these these companies like a Coke and Pepsi, they are making kids addicted to these things by doing it. And then it's it's hard to lose that. 
So we have to change this behavior in our kids. That's why our obesity is going up uh, in children because of these artificially flavored uh, drinks that we accept that it's okay to drink. It's not okay to drink. We should not say it's okay to drink coffee. They're, they're, they're six year old kids. So, so I think I think it's an important message that we have to spread. Anybody recognizes this? Our office has almost all the time in the mornings. Right. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> this is breakfast pizza. I mean, look at this, how bad it looks. <laughs> and it's not, I didn't, I gave, I got it from their website. <laughs> That's how they, they present it. And, and again, this is a big, big issue. Coffee has become a big addiction and, and, and it's become more of a fashion. So drinking colas has become more of a, you know, taboo nowadays. Oh, God, I mean, drinking. So, but now this has become a fashion. And look at how big they're becoming. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, at Trent, I used 30 ounce. And uh, this is not coffee. I don't know when it became a coffee, and it's it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's it, it's almost a, 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 a 900 ml is, is the this this is supposed to be coffee. <laughs> you know our stomach um, is about 900 ml, and and that coffee, the largest one of the larger one, venti or what is that? Um, the Trenta is is about the size of our stomach, and uh, and that's a problem. And it has about a thousand calories in there. Just one meal. Okay, so what is the problem of our refined sugars? It is when we eat a meal with very refined sugars, we continue to produce more and more insulin to maintain the blood sugar. And it can happen over a period of time, it maintains it. So we have our refrigerator, which is our liver, it's always full because we're not giving it time to empty the refrigerator. Because we are eating morning, evening, in between the meals and a white ice cream at 9 p.m. before we go to bed. So, so, so now these excess calories has to be stored somewhere else, which is our freezer is our fat cells. Everybody was born with the, so many fat cells um, at the birth, and and they're variable, um, and and the so that's that's a big issue. And you can only store so much in those fat cells, and after so long, they spill over. Now there's no more room in in those fat cells, no more room in our liver, and that becomes a diabetes. That's what diabetes is. It's not like people think there's a lack of insulin. No, it's not. You have an excessive insulin. But you have a resistance to insulin because there's no more room to pack. And calories keep coming and there's no more room. So it becomes a diabetes. So what do we do for that? I'll tell you the stories. So, so as the sugar consumption uh, went up, uh, our diabetes rates uh, have gone up uh, over the years. Obesity rates have gone up. Um, high fructose corn syrup uh, is... Uh, is a big issue. Um, in, I think it came in 70s. Um, it's very cheap to produce. Um, it's a very, it's a very sweetening agent, and uh, and all our uh, all our coke products and everything is high fructose corn syrup, and uh, which are really destroying this country. So so eventually, what happened is, which this this did not exist uh, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, uh, metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome is basically an abnormality in our body's way to manage the nutrition the way it's coming. So we become obese, we have a high blood pressure, and then we have uh, high blood sugar. And then we have triglycerides are the circulating fat molecules. So, so this what happens in our body, there's a lot of uh, explanation behind this, but I want to keep it simple. So the triglycerides and the HDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol that cleans your body. And our triglycerides go up and the good cholesterol goes down. The ratio between the two, triglycerides versus HDL ratio of more than three, is the best predictor of future heart disease, plaque buildup, heart attacks, 
stopped. Not the LDL cholesterol by itself. The LDL cholesterol, we paid a lot of attention to it after the disease started. Somebody have a heart attack or something, and then we treat that because we can give a pill and treat this. But this is what needs to be treated to change the metabolic syndrome is the basic root cause of the problem. So, so when when people come to me and there are people that are 45, they say, well, how do you tell I'm going to have a heart attack 10 years from now? This is what I look for. Do they have diabetes? Do they have a high blood sugar? Do they have a right plus right to HDL ratio? Is lopsided. Those are the highest risk people that develop heart disease in the future. Not your total cholesterol, not your LDL cholesterol. So this has to be looked into. And, and this is an important issue for, for physicians to notice. So, so we talked about a lot of uh, fat. Oh God, I mean, we got to cut down the fat, low fat um, diet and low carb diet. Um, and and, and then, then actually the you look at it, the the diets are become a huge fad. Uh, we don't talk about the nutrition um, as a value nutrition, or, or rather than we talk about contents of you know, food with the fat and the fat. And also, again, the, the other thing is doctors tell people, oh, you got to cut the calories. And it's not calories. How your body reacts to the calories is very important. Um, so if you look at the the way the body reacts is if you take a, a simple so carbs, right? Carbs come in polysaccharide, monosaccharide, and disaccharide. If you take a white sugar, 100 calories of white sugar is a carb, and 100 calories of apple is a carb. But your body reacts different. When you eat this, the sugar spikes, you release insulin. Next thing is you put it in that straight into the fat. So you never lose for same 100 calories. Whereas if you eat Apple, it's a carb, but you have a blood sugar doesn't rise, so your metabolism is different. Your body reacts differently. So people talk about calories. So not saying it's not important, but that's not the only thing. It's it's what we actually how we how we you know eat, what kind of foods we eat is an important issue. And and you can literally start look at the foods in the bottom uh, versus on the top. How we process them is totally different. That is what important. Uh, it's not the calories that are important. So these are the examples how we can change it. So basically, the difference is a lot of fiber and a lot of roughage in, in, in food makes a huge difference how we process the food and keep you healthy. So diabetes. What is diabetes? Melodies means it's a Number one, people with the diabetes constantly urinate. They keep urinating, 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 and then the urine is sweet. So, 100 years ago, how do you diagnose diabetes? You urinate and a lot of eggs are. That means the guy has diabetes. It's full of sugar. So, it's, it's interesting. That's how they used to diagnose these people. Um, the other thing is diabetes. Um, we think that. Even medical societies uh, say diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. There's nothing cures it. You will have it. Once you have diabetes, you will have it. And, um, and you have to lower the blood sugar by medications. It is a nutritional disease that we treat with medications. Um, the truth is diabetes is a nutritional disease and you have insulin resistance. It's not that you have lack of insulin. You have too much insulin, in fact. And uh, you have to treat the diabetes by lowering the insulin resistance. And, and diabetes is a curable disease in the majority of the people. Not type 1 diabetes, that's a different type 2 diabetes. is pretty much a curable disease. And we do this all the time, actually. So what do we do? We give medicine. We give more medicine, more insulin. Eventually, nothing works. So then we send on to the bariatric surgeon. Right? And then we take away the stomach. What is the magic of taking away stomach or make it small? You can't eat from small. So the diabetes goes away. Look at the diabetes. If you take people with 100% diabetes overweight and do this gastrectomy or sleeve gastrectomy, look at the year one. Only about 10% have diabetes. 
Again, it didn't go up, but even after 10 years, it's less than only 40% of that because some fall through um, change in the food habits when we see this. But diabetes is a curable disease, and, and our society is told, nope, it's not a curable disease, it's a chronic disease, but it's not true. And um, so in, in 1960, here is the first, uh, uh, the treatment of diabetes, he authored a uh, book, and the temporary periods of undernutrition are helpful in the treatment of diabetes. This is in 1960, before we had any medications, we did figure this out. And we need to revisit this uh, science of, of nutritional management of uh, humans. So in the last 100 years, there are only two periods, there are only two periods where diabetes has gone down dramatically during the First World War, during the Second World War. The only reason is sugar ratio. We have, people didn't have sugar, but they only got two kilograms of sugar per month at the most. So diabetes went down dramatically in those two periods. Those are the only two periods. So it's the same thing. Um, diabetes is not cured by insulin, not cured by drugs, not cured by low-fat diets, it's not low-fat diets. So we have to change our protocol, and how do we do that? And what is the scientific basis behind it? Um, here is the American Diabetic Association, which is the premier uh, institution that regulates the diabetes. They also say, it's a chronic progressive disease. You have to treat with medications. Exactly. Look at all these associations, including American Heart Association. These are the companies that sponsor. They have to be very careful in their statements. So, so we have to educate ourselves, or people like me to educate other people. How do you improve this? And and that's a that's a key for our health, because they're not going to do it. Our own associations don't do it. They will keep a little longer though. Uh, and we keep collecting money happily. So, so it's a business model. So treatment, no matter what you do, however, sugar is controlled well. It's important to control. I'm not saying that, but even if it's controlled well, it doesn't change the outcome. Diseases will progress. You will die from diabetes. Um, so, so there is a there is a. Uh, treating the diabetes the, the way we do, they will not change the outcome in the long term. Uh, that's that's an issue. If people are living longer because we, we know how to treat other conditions associated with the diabetes that kill people, but overall, your diabetes, unless you cure, you cure it, it's not going to make any difference. So this is what we do, more and more insulin, and, and these are the surgeries we perform and keep the hospital happy. <laughs> so people are very confused because we see these ads on the news and all kinds of diets. It's it's, it's unbelievable that uh, it's, it has become a huge business, and and we want to for everything. And, and that's another uh, problem. And it's it's uh, I see the you know. Uh, a lot of doctors prescribe these drugs uh, that are not even doctors. People want them. This is a huge business. Wellness economy is a huge business. And look at the money they spend. Almost $3 trillion. Uh, still, are we getting better? Are we getting healthier? No, not at all. So, so calories in and calories out. We teach people. We, Doctors tell people all the time, like, oh, you got to cut the calories less and burn more. It doesn't work. We know that it doesn't. We have done this, we, have, we, we keep doing this. It really does not work. And, and it may work for some time. And studies figure out when the calories, less calories come, it tries to conserve, tries to conserve the energy that it spends. So this calorie in, calorie out, it never worked. Because it's it's not a lifestyle change. It is all you know, trying to manage the counts of the calories. And then it worked for three months, and then we go back to it. 
the way we are. So that's what it does. Both are same calories. You know, you know what's bad and what's good. How you process the food is important. It's not just the calories. That's why I don't talk to people about calories anymore. I don't even tell them. So, so what is the solution for this? So we have tried all kinds of things. There are diets, there are all kinds of programs, and we're spending trillions of dollars. None of them have worked in the last 30 years. So what is the solution? The solution is how our body adapted to the nutrition over the last million years. If we go to that principle, things will be better. What I mean by that is humans, we did not have refrigerators, we didn't have freezers, we didn't have McDonald's, we didn't have you know, Starbucks and none of that stuff. So humans, Every day, got up in the morning, we gathered food, gathered nuts, fruits, berries, vegetables, leaves, fruits. They gathered food. By the time they gathered food, it's already like 11 o'clock in the morning. And they consume the food as whole food. There's no processing of the food. And then we have eaten meat. We have eaten meat for million years. And I think about 700 million, million years ago, we invented fire. Ever since we had the fire, <laughs> we ate meat. But imagine you as a primitive man, catch a rabbit. How hard it is. You know, a little rabbit can run faster than you. <laughs> and that rabbit has eaten grass and very lean. And that meat is very lean. Good meat, and you only could eat whatever the animal you caught. You only could eat a little bit of meat, and then there's no place to store, so some of the animal will eat it. By evening, humans cannot see anything in the dark, even nothing. They never could see, you know, today they can't see. So by 7 or whatever, 8 p.m., and it's dark, those animals that eat other animals can see it pretty good. So you have to go hide in a tree or in a cave <laughs> somewhere, and you have not eaten. Next day until 10 or 11 or noon until you gather food again. And we ate meat not every day. We ate meat probably three times a week. Very little meat, good meat. The way we eat meat, you all know how our chicken are grown. They don't move, from, they just fed grain and grain and grain. Look at our cattle. They sit there and they give them grain. They don't even grass, they don't walk. They, so usually a calf, by the time it goes to slaughterhouse, it probably takes two to two and a half years normally. Now it takes six months. There is so much fat. And it's, it's, it's so much, and then we give so many hormones for them to grow bigger. And, and then you give all the antibiotics to prove it because they're in a crowded place. So our meat is really, really bad. Uh, whatever the meat you take, and that's a huge problem. So we, the way we ate is a little, little meat and get unprocessed food and the body figured out. That's how the insulin is there. That's how the excess storage and energy needs to be stored because it came only around six or eight hour period in a day. And then you have to survive the rest of the 16 or 18 hours. So that's how our body was for a million years. We changed that in the last 50, 100 years with industrialized production of food. And that has become a huge issue. That's why we are so sick. Despite all kinds of medications, despite all kinds of knowledge we have, um, the food, the way we consume has changed so suddenly. It's a shock to our body. That's what we're saying. That's why if we follow the way our body adapted to the nutrition over the million years, we get healthy in a very short time. Very short period of time. That's what intermittent fasting is. It's not a it's not a diet, it is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. That's what it is. That's how we get better. Uh, because that's how our bodies are adapted to. There are some though, you know, things you need to learn, but really it's a very simple science. It is very simple science. Unprocessed, plant-based 
whole food and restricted time eating. That's what's going to make difference. Nothing else. You're not going to make it as physician. We don't make any difference. We can keep you a little longer. The body can be trained too fast. Is it true or false? Sure. Absolutely. People have done. People do it for 40 days. That's how the human body can sustain 40 days of water fasting. 40 days. This is what we tell. I wouldn't say large meals, but we tell our diabetic patients, you have to have three meals and two snacks. All the time. We do this all the time. False. He's a British, I think he's a British Ireland guy. He's a 460 pounds. He went on 382 days of water fasting. He had some vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. And you can search this. He lost, I think he's, he's after 38 days, he, he was 180 pounds. So human body can sustain long periods of fasting. False. No, your metabolism actually increases. You know, to be honest with you, when we eat a huge meal, like whatever, all of or whatever, what is the next thing that happens to you? We have no energy. People are like ready to fall asleep in the afternoon. If you don't eat, actually, you're much more. Your brain is more attentive, and we don't fall asleep. Or you eat the right food, also you feel better. So really, the, the metabolism will continue to go on, whether you're fasting or <clears throat> eating all kinds of food. So, our <coughs> microbacteria in our gut are the most important thing to maintain our health. There's a lot of, a lot of things called leaky gut syndrome. There's a lot of toxins get released from the body. If we don't have a healthy, healthy bacteria in our gut, which is a very important science and we don't even pay attention to it. So there are things called the prebiotics and probiotics, right? The prebiotics are the foods that we eat that really promote the growth of the bacteria, healthy bacteria that actually includes a lot of things, immunity, infections. Um, there, there, there's so many parameters we improve um, your brain function, Alzheimer's, memory issues, everything gets better. So intermittent fasting is not starvation. We're not starving people. We're just restricting the time they eat. It's not a calorie restriction. It is a time restriction. So people think that, oh, my God, that's a, that's a starvation. No, it's not. It's not at all. Because I'm not talking about calories. I'm talking about healthy eating. You can eat whatever calories you want. So there are a few people, you know, that children, they should not intermittent fast. The pregnant mothers and nursing mothers, they shouldn't do it, um, which is only a short period of time in, in our life. Um, but otherwise, you know, people with anorexia, you know, they have eating disorders already. So these are the few people, but otherwise, majority of the people can have a healthy intermittent fasting. So you don't need a dietitian. You don't need some advisor. This is all... It's your own way of eating. It's a way of life. Um, so it's voluntary. You can do whatever you want. And, and, and it's all that you have to do is complete withholding of calories for a certain period of the time of the day. That's all it is. And you can eat whatever you want within the reason. So what happens is our body, as we eat food, it generates a lot of radicals, a lot of food. Products that are toxic to our body. Um, our cells have accumulated these things. When you fast, when you fast, there's no nutrition. Our body cleans up our own cells. That's called autophagy. Autophagy is, is practiced in India for a long time. A, 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 a scientist in Japan, I don't have that slide somewhere. Yep, he. In 2016, he received a Nobel Prize 
for the members. The autophagy is a huge um, benefit of intermittent fasting. So what promotes autophagy? There are a lot of things that promotes autophagy. There's some drugs, there's a caffeine, um, but fasting is the number one. Number one reason. And, and, um, and actually you can cure cancers by nutritional treatments. There is a, I don't know anybody knows, uh, people probably know this well, there is a chat, there is a Netflix type of channel called Tubi, P-U-B-I, ever heard of it? And there is a documentary in there actually, this is the people's, their own, you know, stories, very powerful uh, movie, it's called Eating You Alive. Watch this. It's a fascinating story for people. How the stage four cancers, doctors told, oh, you're going to die in three months. But they went through alternative nutrition and eating you alive. The thing on a two beach channel. So watch that. It's a, it's a fascinating story. So it promotes autophagy, which reduces the cancers and it improves the immunity. So there's a lot of benefits of that. Um, so A lot of benefits of autophagy to read about it. I think it will come in uh, in, uh, in in the packet you give when some of the printed material. So, so we talked about what is intermittent fasting, right? It's basically with voluntarily withholding the food for certain number of hours. Some people, there are various ways of doing it, uh, but easiest way of doing it is because we already don't eat approximately eight hours in a day, we don't eat because we're sleeping. So if you extend that slowly, little bit, little bit to 16 hours, then you're already doing an autophagy, uh, uh, doing an intermittent fasting and getting the benefits of intermittent fasting. Um, and, and as we saw, there's so many benefits, but some people do the eight five days and two days of nothing. My mother has, from my childhood, I've known her two days in a week, Tuesday and Friday. She would not eat anything, just walking all of her life. She has done it for religious purposes, but this is what practice in India, knowing that this health promotion, health benefits of this is known well for a long time, for, 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 for ancient for ancient times. And that's what uh, you know, Lent, and that's what uh, the Muslims do Ramadan. They don't eat from sunset to you know, sunrise for the third days. And this is that. This is that. Really, there's so much of health benefits. So I don't want to bore with this, but you can do a lot of different ways to things. But easiest way to do for most of us is eight hours of eating, fifteen hours of not eating. So we talked about this um, the metabolic rate increases actually when we do the fasting, your autophagy and your immune system and cancer prevention, a lot of benefits of this. So this is what I recommend for most of my patients is in the morning you get up and you drink water and coffee. And then you eat in between between 12 and 8, and then you can drink in coffee or bone broth or something like that. Bone broth is, uh, uh, some people like it, love it, some people don't. It is nothing but fat. Yeah. A little bit of fat. It's a broth with the fat. So you do not, you know, it, it release insulin. That's the key is to prevent the insulin resistance. That is the key in, in, in doing this. And you would healthy in between. You can have a piece of meat. It's okay. I mean, and, and it's not a calorie restricted diet. And you eat pretty much what you want. No big enough. So how do you do successfully the intermittent fasting? Drink plenty of water. God created water to drink, not juices, not Colas. So I'm going to ask the question. If you take a 
20 ounce of Coke. 20 ounce of Coke. You know how much sugar is in it? You know, when I tell my patients 100 grams, you don't know what that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I tell them 13 teaspoons of sugar. A 12 ounce Coke has 8 teaspoons of sugar. And you can multiply that over a year. Even if you're drinking one, you can imagine how much sugar it is. It's amazing how much we don't even know what's in that's a problem. So here, here are the things to do. Um, ride the wave of hunger for a few days. That's a very important. So normally if you eat um, at 8 a.m., just change it to 9 a.m. for a week and change it to 10 a.m. for a week, the breakfast, whatever you eat. And then eventually you won't be hungry. It's, it's, it's very simple. It may take a month. Who cares? We have 25, 30 years of life. So three, four weeks is not a big issue. And 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 it gets easier. It gets it's a mindset, it's a lifestyle. So don't worry about all these things about diet and what to eat, what not to eat. People ask me these questions. Can you write down what can I do? <laughs> no, it is I don't have to. And and you know what? There's always a is it July 4th? You have to eat whatever you want. It's okay. There is a Thanksgiving. You have to. It's okay. It's no big deal. This is even if you do this 85, 90 percent of the time, it will change your life. It's answer. So don't get too hard. It's, so it's more life. So. so when you don't eat, you have enough reserves. So it looks and works. And it also promotes autophagy, which, which also creates nutrition to our body. So, and, and this is how you actually maintain a healthy weight. You, you, there, there's, you know, the, the animal kingdom had this famine and feast. They have done this. If you look at the African animals, they, for six months, they have no food. They're like basically skin and bones, and then they jump up. This is what the nature was. I'm not saying that we have to go to that extent, but we can improve on what we have. And then the gut bacteria. I talked about that. So in summary, there are a lot of benefits. It reduces the circulating triglycerides, which is circulating fat. It reduces the blood pressure. It uh, reduces the inflammation. Um, there are people who have arthritis and a lot of inflammatory diseases. They go for two or three weeks of fasting, water fasting. All their pains go away. Completely go away. Inflammatory disease. My daughter had asthma, terrible asthma. So every six months she does 11 days of water fasting. She doesn't have to take any medication for asthma. It's an inflammatory disease. Your body goes into this primitive fighting mechanism where you can resist a lot. For example, cancer patients, when, they, when we give chemotherapy, they get extremely sick. And we give all kinds of drugs. But if they go on a 72 hour fasting, and then go get a chemotherapy drug, they will not get sick. That's what's going to be implemented. There are studies going on right now. There is a book, there is actually a, 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 a documentary called The Science of Fasting. Just watch it. It's, it's available in the Science of Fasting. It's about a 60, 70 minutes. It has a logo of a, you know, a water glass. That's all it is. It has a uh, science of fasting. It is available. In the it's a fascinating uh, uh, document. So you know your cell repair, and you know we, our body, our, our our cells are getting damaged, and that's how you get cancer. So you have to repair them constantly. How do you do that? Autophagy is the key to cell repair and reduce the cancers. Um, so there's so many things to do that. Life. So so the, the, the general sense of well-being of a human being in is this. So as we talked about this, start extending your, you know, times of eating um, or not eating. 
and, and eventually you, you should come to 16.8, which is the easiest thing for most of the people. So slowly do it three days a week and then increase to five days a week and then you know, can do seven days a week. That's the goal. So people think that, oh my God, I have to have five meals a day or three meals a day, but no, it's, it's actually beneficial not to eat all day. Um, so do the 16-8 method. It enhances the ketosis. Ketosis is an important phenomenon where your insulin resistance get better. When your insulin resistance gets better, you lose weight, your blood sugars are better, your blood pressure better, everything gets better. And you live longer without our help. 